Hello everyone, and welcome to Lab Manager's Product Spotlight webinar series. These webinars are designed to help attendees understand a specific proprietary service or technology and where and how it can be applied in an effort to help labs operate more efficiently. My name is Betsy Young, and I'll be moderating today's webinar titled Understanding Liquid Handling in the Lab, Selecting the Right Tools to Improve Laboratory Productivity. We like our webinars to be very interactive, so we encourage you to send us your questions at any point during the presentation. Many of you know the drill, but for those of you just joining us, please just type your query into the question box located on the left-hand side of your screen. We'll try to address as many of these questions as possible during the Q&A period. If we happen to run out of time, I'll forward any unanswered questions to our presenters, and they can respond to you via email. Additional resources can be accessed via the resource window. And just a reminder that this webinar recording will be available later this week on Lab Manager's website. At the end of this webinar, we'll share that link with you again, as well as the contact information for our speakers. At this time, I'd like to introduce today's presenters. Nancy Nardone is a technical product specialist at Brandtech Scientific Inc., providing product support and training across the entire Brandtech portfolio. She obtained her MS from Virginia Polytechnic University in Blacksburg, Virginia, and worked as a research biologist at both academic and pharmaceutical institutions prior to joining Brandtech. Also joining us today is Stephanie Franco. Stephanie is a technical product manager at Brandtech Scientific Inc. She enjoys managing the brand life science portfolio at Brandtech, which consists of PCR microplate consumables and the automated liquid handling station pipetting robot. She received her PhD studying developmental neuroscience from Northwestern University in Chicago, Illinois. Thanks for joining us today, ladies. All right. So shall we do it that way? Yes. Okay. So if we want to start on slide two. All right. Okay. So when performing liquid transfers in the lab, there are five key questions to ask in order to determine what the best tool is for the job. What is the liquid to be transferred? How much liquid is to be transferred? Where is the liquid coming from? Where is the liquid going to? And how routine or variable are the transfers? Slide three, please. All right. For performing liquid transfers, you have a wide variety of liquid handling instruments to choose from. In today's webinar, we'll review some of the more common instruments using examples from Brandtech's product line. Some of the common liquid handling instruments used in the lab include bottle top dispensers, bottle top burettes, repeating pipettes, manual pipettes, and in this category, there are both air displacement and positive displacement pipettes, electronic pipettes, and automated pipetting robots. Actually, I think we might have gotten internet capability here. So on to slide four. So bottle top dispensers are available in several different models, making it possible to use them with a wide range of reagents. Brandtech offers the Dispensat S, Dispensat S Organic, and Dispensat S Trace Analysis bottle top dispensers to cover most lab reagents. Bottle top dispensers are designed to repeatedly dispense preset volumes of liquid. The volumes can range from as low as 0.1 mL up to 100 mL. And as the name implies, they're generally placed on a bottle. They can also be adapted to be used on drums or carboys. And reagents can be dispensed into a variety of labware. With the use of the flexible discharge tube, they can also easily dispense into vials or tubes. Bottle top dispensers are great tools for repetitive dispensing of medium to large volumes of reagent, or even just a safer way to transfer lab chemicals from the original container to a secondary or working container. Bottle top burettes are a specialized instrument used for titration. They are not automatic bottle top dispensers, which a lot of people confuse them for. Brandtech's bottle top burette, the Titrat, 
can be used with most titrating reagents up to a one molar concentration and is available in three volume sizes, 10, 25, or 50 mils. Like the dispense set, it will fit on most standard reagent bottles or a two liter clear or amber reservoir is also available. Titrations are usually performed in a vessel such as a Griffin beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask. And in contrast to a bottle top dispenser, the total volume dispensed from bottle top burette for a titration is unknown until the end point is reached. Each time titration is performed, the volume will vary. Repeating pipettes are very flexible tools to have in the lab. They're great for rep repetitive dispensing of a variety of reagents in a wide range of volumes. Because the tips used with these instruments are positive displacement type tips where the piston comes in contact with the liquid dispensed, they're suitable for highly viscous and volatile liquids as well as aqueous liquids. The manual repeating pipettes have step volume settings for volume selection and in combination with the various volume tips, specific volumes are specified for dispensing. The manual Handy Step S has nine step or volume settings, and in combination with the bronze PD tips, which are available in 10 different volume sizes, ranging from 0.1 mil up to 50 mils, 59 different volumes, ranging from two microliters to five mils, can be dispensed. Electronic repeating pipettes, such as the Handy Step Electronic, offer a volume range that's expanded and much more flexible. With the Handy Step Electronic, volumes from one microliter all the way up to 50 mil can be dispensed. The only limitation in liquid source with repeating pipettes or the destination of the liquid with a repeating pipette is accessibility of the tip to the, for the liquid to be aspirated or the ability of the tip to fit into the opening of the destination vessel. These instruments provide a high level of flexibility for repetitive dispensing of a single reagent at a time. However, to dispense a different reagent, you simply need to change the tips. And it's easy to work from different sources, dispense into different destinations, change your volumes, or switch between reagents. They're a very flexible tool, tool for the lab. Your manual pipettes are one of the most common liquid handling tool instruments found in the lab. These are both air displacement and positive displacement pipettes. Air displacement pipettes, such as the Transfer Pet S, where the liquid is moved by a cushion of air, are suitable for many different types of liquids. However, for viscous or volatile liquids, a positive displacement pipette where the piston or seal will come in contact with the liquid, such as the Transfer Petter, would be the recommended instrument. Often referred to as micro pipettes, these instruments are generally used to transfer small to moderate volumes of liquid. As with the repeating pipettes, the only source limitation is going to be accessibility to properly aspirate the liquid. And the only limitation for the destination is being able to properly fit the tip into your vessel in order to get proper dispensing. The multi-channel pipette is generally available in eight or 12 channels, and this is a specialty for working with microplates. Some manufacturers also have 16-channel pipettes available for working specifically with 384 well plates. And for these instruments, your, source, your liquid source is most usually going to be a reagent reservoir. The manual pipette is going to be one of the most versatile tools in the lab, capable of handling a wide range of reagents and variable volumes. Electronic, oh, excuse me, let me move my slide. Electronic air displacement pipettes have the same characteristics and parameters of use as manual air displacement pipettes. They're going to be suitable for many liquids, but for electronic pipetting of highly viscous or a volatile liquid, one should consider an electronic repeating pipette, such as the Handy Step Electronic, with its positive displacement tips. While electronic air displacement pipettes are similar to their manual counterparts in liquid compatibility and volume range, they do offer distinct advantages. 
Electronic pipettes can reduce the amount of pipetting forces required, which will alleviate repetitive motion issues. Also, because they're automated rather than manually operated, they'll reduce use, they can reduce user error, resulting in improved pipetting accuracy and data repeatability. The next level of automated pipetting is the automated pipetting robot. This category of liquid handling instruments includes a wide range of instrumentation from robots that take up very little space to those that can take up a whole room. These instruments are suitable for many liquid types. Some systems, like the Browns Liquid Handling Station, use air displacement liquid ends, which are suitable for many types of liquids. They have the ability to re reproducibly compensate for liquids that would be a challenge with manually operated instruments. However, you would want to avoid chemicals that may be damaging to the materials and, compo and components of the instrument. The volume range for pipetting robots can range from nanoliter to milliliter volumes, and sources and destinations can range from something as small as a PCR tube to 96 or 384 well microplates, all the way up to reservoirs that may hold larger sample volumes up to, say, a 240 mil capacity reservoir. Additionally, you'll find a wide range of system structures. Some systems are not enclosed, and this can pose problems for sample as well as user safety. Other systems, such as the Brown Liquid Handling Station, are enclosed for sample and user protection. Traditionally, robots in the lab have been reserved for highly repetitive and high-throughput procedures. However, there are systems now available that make robotics available and sensible for even low to medium throughput procedures. So at this point, I'm going to hand the presentation over to Stephanie, who will discuss transitioning your lab to automation. Thank you, Nancy. Switching from manual processes to automated processes can be daunting. So how do you know if your lab is ready for automation? Some considerations you will want to think about during this process are the number of samples that your lab is handling. Perhaps you start off with a few samples and some tubes. Then you find yourself switching to a few plates. Then you find yourself processing several plates at a time. If this happens, it is worth considering automation to aid you in increasing your throughput. Secondly, perhaps you are concerned with experiment reproducibility and consistency. Each laboratory worker has a different pipetting technique, and this can invariably alter experimental outcome and consistency. Automation will help you streamline this and make your processes and results more consistent. Another reason to switch to automation is for ergonomic and safety reasons. Monotonous and repetitive pipetting tasks can be taxing on a worker. There are many different ergonomic pipette options, but there is always still a risk of repetitive motion. Switching to automation puts the burden of repetition on the instrument and not the person. Safety concerns can also be aided with the use of a robot if the liquids you are working with can be hazardous to your personnel. Utilizing automation, you are able to limit the exposure of hazardous substance to your laboratory staff. Another key consideration, and there are many more, is that by adding automation to your laboratory, you can free up your laboratory members to develop more complex experiments and do other laboratory tasks, such as data analysis. So, after you decide that you would like for your laboratory to transition to automated liquid handling, there are many things to consider when selecting an automated liquid handler. First off, you want a liquid handler that is appropriate for your throughput. You need a system that will work with the number of samples that you would like to process and within the volume ranges that you would like to handle. There are liquid handlers as small as plate stampers that can transfer 96 or 384 wells at a time, or if you have super high throughput, you may need a large liquid handler capable of handling many samples at a time. This type of system may require single and multi-channel pipetting heads. Secondly, you want to consider how easy the system is to operate. Some liquid handlers can be operated by anyone with very little programming knowledge, and some of the more complex robots 
will require a dedicated staff to not only program the instrument, but also to service the instrument. Affordability is always a consideration, and it's not the only the cost of the instrument that you should consider, but you must also consider the cost of tips that will need to be continually purchased as part of the overall cost of ownership. Additionally, you will want to consider service and maintenance costs. The size of the instrument is also a key consideration as laboratory space is often a limit limiting resource for many laboratories. If you are a small lab, you'll want a small instrument. If you are lucky enough to not be restricted by space, perhaps a larger instrument can work. System flexibility is also important to consider. If you foresee your laboratory having changing and evolving needs, you'll want a system that can be upgraded with ease. You may also want it to integrate with other laboratory equipment. Lastly, as with all equipment purchases, you'll want a reliable system that gives you consistent results without breaking. A broken instrument not only costs money to fix, but it costs time. Now, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and tell you about the bronze liquid handling station and where it fits into the overall process of liquid handling in your lab. The LHS is a compact benchtop pipe padding robot suitable for low to medium throughput applications. It has more functionality than a plate a complex robotic system that has active heating, cooling, shaking, integration abilities, um, and these type of systems also will require programming skills and a lot of lab space. The LHS is designed and manufactured by our sister company, Brandt, in Germany, and has placements throughout the globe. The LHS is a true benchtop system that takes up less than eight cubic feet of laboratory space. It is essentially a two foot by two foot by two foot box. It has an innovative lift door that allows it to sit under shelving even when open. It is also lightweight should you need to move it around your lab. One of the cool things about the LHS is that despite its small size, it really does a lot. There are seven working positions where you can put tips, plates, tubes, and reservoirs. There is an eighth position that is a dedicated waste position. It has five available liquid ends, which these are what we call our pipetting modules, and they can handle a volume range of one microliter up to 1,000 microliters. Really, anything you want to do, whether it's PCR setup, cherry picking, or serial dilutions, the system can handle it with ease. Not only is the LHS small and versatile, but it's very easy to use. Our system does require a manual change of the liquid ends when switching from single to multi-channel or different volumes, but it's done with a simple click of a button. There are no tools required to tighten the liquid end, and there is no need for additional calibration. Now, one of the other cool things about the LHS is its software. It's so easy to use that pretty much anyone can program it with very little training. It is a Windows-based system, which means you can use all of the familiar shortcuts like copy and paste or left and right click and drag and drop. The interface is simple with pictures of your consumables and color coding of your liquid transfers. It has a consistent three-part layout with the list of labware or commands on the left, the work table in the center, and your consumables or transfers on the right. You work through the software in a top-down, left-to-right manner. As easy as this system is to use, we are not infallible and are capable of making mistakes. Therefore, the software has multiple checkpoints for errors. During the programming process, it will not let you tell it to do something that it simply cannot do. For example, in this graphic, the column highlighted in red indicates that a programming error has occurred. In addition, you get a transfer error dialog box. If you look closely, it's because we have asked the instrument to move a volume of liquid which is not there. Not only is there constant method checking during the programming process, but it also gives you a final check once you reach the execution stage before the robot ever moves. Once you reach the execution stage, to make your life easier, it gives you a shopping list of items that you will need to run your protocol, such as 
which consumables to use, which adapters and racks you will need, and probably the most important information is the number of tips that you will use during your method. I think we can all agree that it is an important point to check as tip usage is a large part of the cost of owning a liquid handling robot. Additionally, the execution screen gives you not only a time calculation of your program's method, but gives you a timeline of events that will occur during the method. In this case, there are three transfer steps with one liquid end change. If you are able to network the LHS, there are email capabilities that can notify you of various events, such as when your method is finished or if an intervention is needed. Finally, there is a 3D simulation mode that allows you to watch the robot in action before you ever touch any of your reagents. Your method may be airproof from a programming standpoint, but you may find that you could use a different technique. This is where true optimization happens. I'm about to start a video that shows you essentially what the 3D simulation mode looks like and let it run very quickly. During the simulation, you will see that the robot can be viewed at different angles and different speeds. We always recommend to watch this when developing a new protocol before trying it with your samples. This will prevent you from possible tip or sample contamination and allows you to see points for optimization. So let's take a brief moment for a short simulation. So, in summary, you have been presented with a large array of equipment for liquid handling. Which tool is right for you? To answer this question, let's review the five key questions for liquid handling decisions. What is the liquid to be transferred? How much will you transfer? Where will the liquid come from and where will it go? And finally, ask yourself the frequency of transfer. This chart summarizes all of the key features of the different types of liquid handling devices. Select a bottle top dispenser if you need to dispense large volumes of liquid from a large container. A burette can be used for specialized liquid handling applications such as titration. The manual micropipette uh, micro is of course the workhorse of the lab. This is the go-to instrument for most people. With volume ranges from 0.1 microliter to 10 mils, it can handle a lot of tasks and a lot of different liquid types. Electronic pipettes can also be used to increase reproducibility of manual processes, and repetitive pipettes can be used for repeated dispensing of small volumes. Finally, if you see your laboratory with increasing throughput liquid handling needs, you may consider a switch to automation. Lastly, I would like to close with a representation of all of the liquid handling devices that Brandtech can offer you. 
We offer high quality products from our industry leading dispensette bottle top dispensers to our single and multi channel transfer pet pipettes and handy step uh, repeating pipettes. We also have our compact, versatile, and easy to use liquid handling station pipetting robot. You can be sure that Brantech has a solution for you. Thank you for attending our webinar and being patient with us during our technical difficulties. Um, and we would like to open up the floor for questions. Thank you. Just as one quick reminder, if anyone joined us late and you have any questions for Nancy or Stephanie, you can ask those simply by typing your question into the question box located on the left-hand side of your screen. All right, our first question. What methods would you recommend for dispensing aliquots of sterile FBS? So for dispensing aliquots of sterile SBS, um, excuse me, FBS, um, we would probably recommend using the repeating pipette with the sterile pipette tips, um, PD tips. Uh, PD tips are avail available sterilely in all of the volumes that they come in. Um, so for aliquotting, you would simply use one of the sterile tips on either the manual or the electronic pipette, depending upon how many aliquots you had to do. Um, and you could have your um, maintain the sterility of your FBS and do your aliquots very simply and easily. Great, thank you. This next question is, what's the best tool for viscous solutions, such as botanical oils or carrier oils? Um, for a viscous solution, we absolutely recommend the um, transfer petter which is our positive displacement pipette. Um, and it comes in volumes from 500 microliters up to 10 mils. Um, so depending upon the volume that you need to dispense, um, that has reusable tips and seals. But that would be for viscous um, solutions, that's absolutely the tool of choice. Thank you. What automated solutions do you have for larger volumes, say 10 to 50 milliliters? Um, the, uh, the person asking this question requires systems that can handle 2% uh, nitric and 1% hydrochloric acid matrices for trace metal analysis. Um, do you have anything that fits the bill? So not automated for trace metal analysis. Generally, we recommend our dispenset S trace analysis bottle top dispenser. Um, however, it is not an automated system. Um, but we have quite a few customers that use that um, dispenser quite successfully in that application. Um, but it is not, again, it is not automated. It is a manual system. And that is a For dispensing sterile saline, what method do you recommend? We have the Dispenset S, which um, is quite popular for dispensing saline. It is an autoclavable instrument, so it is possible to um, sterilize the instrument and put it on your sterile bottle of saline, and then you can, um, uh, excuse me, uh, do your sterile aliquots of saline with the bottle top dispenser. It's also possible, um, depending upon how repetitive or what your volumes would be, you could also use the handy step um, with the sterile pipette tips. But more frequently, we see customers using the dispenset S um, and autoclaving that and putting it directly on the bottle itself of sterile saline. Thank you. How are, how are liquid classes defined with the bronze liquid handler? We have several predefined liquid classes that range anywhere from an aqueous solution to a serum, to a plasma, DMSO, um, lots of different classes, whether 
you know, based on the density and viscosity um, of the liquid. The liquid handling station software does also have the ability to adapt to unknown liquid types, um, which can be determined in your laboratory with by changing aspiration speeds, dispensing speeds, wait times. Um, it's it's quite easy to do that if you have a class of unknown that's not already programmed into the software. Great, thank you. And are there any liquid detection modules with the larger liquid handler? The liquid handler that we have, um, the LHS, does not have liquid level detection. Um, it is a manual process, so you do have to tell the system how much liquid is there and be kind of reliable about it. Great, thank you. For a scientist that does a lot of serial dilutions, um, how does it make sense for me to automate the procedures? Well, uh, using serial dilutions, obviously, um, there's a lot of pipetting steps involved. There's a lot of calculations involved. Um, by using the robot, you can consistently add liquids to the different wells and not lose track of which wells that you're actually adding liquid to. Um, the other advantage of using, say, an automated system for this is that our system, the LHS does interact with Excel, so if you do have a complicated series, uh, series of serial dilutions, you can upload your data into a spreadsheet and easily import it. Um, using automation, you're really going to help yourself um, by not introducing errors into your pipetting process. How does automation save me time? Well, automation, I would say, has its benefits. Um, a robotic process um, is going to certainly, it's going to require time investment um, up front. Also, during an actual robot procedure, uh, the robot may not handle liquid handling as quickly as an actual person. Um, so the time savings that you're going to experience are going to be when you are actually freed up from sitting at your bench by patting the same amount of liquids over and over, you're going to be a, have the opportunity to do um, other things in your laboratory. Um, as I said, maybe it's data analysis or, or working with some other sort of experiments. Um, so again, considering a, from a time standpoint, um, it's really going to help you with your consistency um, and your reproducibility of experiments rather than cutting seconds off of a pipetting protocol. Great, thank you. Does the automated liquid handler have a wash station available to wash tips? No, our system does not have a wash station. You do have to um, use new tips. It's not capable of washing them. Got it. And can you do sample tracking with the benchtop liquid handler? If so, is this something that you can interface with robotic systems? You can do sample tracking um, within the software. Um, you just set a priority on the samples, and it will track it through the software. Um, it, the system itself does not integrate with other equipments, but it does produce reports um, that you can have an output. Everything that the robot does uh, is very closely monitored by the software itself, and there are customizable reports that you can put any type of information in it that you want. Great. The liquid I'm pipetting drips from the tip. How do I prevent this from happening? Depending on how significant the dripping is, you may be able to, and you know, what the liquid is that you're working with, you may be able to prevent it by increasing the number of pre-wetting steps that you do in order to condition the air cushion in the tip. Um, if you're working with something that is really volatile and that's why your liquid is dripping, then um, we would recommend going to a um, positive displacement pipette, and that would resolve the issue, working with um, something like the transfer pattern. Thank you. And we have one last question. 
how often should someone be calibrating their pipettes? Um, again, this uh, really depends upon the end user, what their usage is like and what their requirements are in the lab. The manufacturer recommends at least on a yearly basis, um, but some users would require a more frequent calibration um, interval, either six months or three months, um, but certainly at least on a yearly basis is the recommended interval for pipette calibration to make sure that your pipettes are functioning properly. Thank you. And thank you very much for your presentation today. This concludes today's product spotlight. If you have any further questions, please consider reaching out to Nancy or Stephanie directly. Their contact information, as you can see, is available on the screen. This brings us to the end of today's webinar. Just a reminder that today's webinar was recorded, and you'll receive an email notifying you when the on-demand webinar is available. On behalf of Lab Manager, I'd like to thank our presenter, pre presenters, sorry about that, for all of their hard work, and Brontech Scientific for sponsoring this product spotlight webinar. I'd also like to thank all of our attendees for taking time out of their busy schedules and asking some great questions. For more information about all of Lab Manager's upcoming and on-demand webinars, or to learn more about the latest laboratory tools and technologies, I invite you to visit our website at labmanager.com. Thank you for joining, and have a great day. Okay, and we're off air now.